My name is Mila Aliyubi. I am the Director of Strategic Partnerships here at BISC, and my pronouns are she, her. Hi, everyone. I'm Marcia Donay, the Capacity Building Director at BISC, and my pronouns are she, her. Hi there. I'm Karen Rivetta Fowler. I'm the Policy and Legal Advocacy Director. My pronouns are she, her. So we here at BISC conducted the Ballot Measure Landscape Analysis by reviewing our 2020 research, the election results, and doing extensive interviews with dozens of stakeholders from across the progressive ballot measure ecosystem. And we can clearly conclude that our formula works. When you combine pooled policies that really matter to Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and AAPI communities, and young people, and organized directly impacted people, while committing to long-term 360 investments, you win and build sustainable power. Since the start of our proactive efforts in 2016, we've seen wins passing in red and blue states like minimum wage increases, Medicaid expansion, paid family leave, voting rights restoration, higher earner tax increases, and removing slavery from state constitutions, to name a few. It's no coincidence that since 2017, we've seen constant attacks on direct democracy in the form of legislation introduced mostly in GOP majority states. These bills are intended to impede and even take away our use of the ballot measure as a tool for liberation. We're also witnessing a notable uptick of legal and legislative challenges to the implementation of progressive measures. This year, 114 ballot measure bills have been introduced. Most all of them attacks in red states where progressive measures have passed. This year, we're also seeing an alarming trend of bills that would give more authority to the government over the ballot measure process, like Missouri's HJR 22, which would give the General Assembly policy authority over a ballot measure before it is even approved for circulation. We still see opportunity in the midst of crisis. Since the start of the COVID-19 shutdowns in March, we have seen significant shifts in voter attitudes around the role of government in caring for its people. And as a result of the uprisings and racial reckoning across the country, we continue to see voter attitudes towards addressing race and systemic racism shift. Voters don't just want policy change as usual, they want bold structural reforms and they see ballot measures as the vehicle to make those changes. Because voters have little faith in candidates or institutions, but they do have trust and hope tied to direct democracy to affect real change in their community. That's why BISC is working with our partners now to identify bold policies that center the needs of directly impacted people. And what we have to report is really exciting because our partners on the ground are already planning for proactive measures, not just in 2022, but in 2024 and 2026 in these three areas. One, protecting and unleashing democracy. We see a continued push to expand voter access and rights and a move towards structural reforms that will dismantle racism and break down polarization in our democracy. Two, economic justice. We see a continued push to expand access to basic human needs like health and child care, education and livable wages, and a move towards structural reforms that will radically redistribute wealth in America that is equitable and just. And three, abolition. We see a continued push to dismantle the systems that perpetuate slavery through decriminalization, through sentencing and bail reform, and through reimagining the police not just on a statewide level, but at the local level through local measures. And we also see a move towards structural reforms that will remove profits from prisons and detention centers in America. We can only realize these bold structural triumphs at the ballot if the ballot measure process is available to us. The legislative and legal attacks to keep us from qualifying and passing ballot measures has opened up an opportunity for us to take action. We're taking a closer look at the laws governing the process. With our Lawyers Guild and state partners, we're analyzing the initiative process components and comparing the experiences across states so we can propose solutions to strengthen our tool, make it more accessible to the people, and close some of the gaps that are making our victories vulnerable to challenge. We're considering things like language drafting and oversight, readability, 
legislative alteration, and qualification thresholds. We see numerous opportunities in the years ahead. We didn't get to this place overnight. It has taken years of hard work and investment by all of us at this conference. And now is the time to double down on our people and bold approaches to the work. We need to start with protecting direct democracy as the people's tool through a national coordinated strategy utilizing both defense and proactive approaches. We need to continue the work of aligning funding partners and practitioners to ensure the resources are sequenced in a way that sets campaigns and our broader movement up for success. We need to have a better understanding of our people. That means a better understanding of BIPOC communities, moving away from seeing communities as monoliths and understanding what is important to people living in different geographic areas, speaking different languages with different histories and different cultures. It also includes having a greater understanding of who is a ballot measure voter. As we've already stated, ballot measures transcend party politics. Understanding the nuances of why that is, is key to BISC's 360 ballot measure lifecycle approach. Understanding our people will allow us to build an intersectional and power building narrative that ties our bold policy agenda together. And we need to invest in digital organizing and communications capacity to disseminate that narrative and allow organizations and campaigns to scale up and pivot when needed. We have what it takes right here in this virtual room to make the world we want to live in a reality if we operate from a place of abundance and we do it together.